Howdy, my name is Aaron Boster, uh, speaking with you at the Ohio Health MS Center. This is an impromptu educational opportunity, uh, talking a little bit about uh, healthy habits, things that we can do, behaviors that we can uh, take that will improve uh, our outcome and quality of life, specifically cognitive hygiene. So when I say cognitive hygiene, I'm talking about a set of behaviors that will optimize our thinking and memory. Um, I'm going to point out uh, nine things that uh, at our center we find to be helpful with regards to thinking and memory. Number one is to stay physically active. And so staying physically active is good for your mind the way that it's good for your body. And you need to find a physical activity that works for you. We really like low stress activities like yoga, uh, Pilates, uh, Tai Chi, and anything in the water is wonderful. And so you have to seek out an activity that'll work well for you. That's number one. Number two is to stay uh, socially active. Sometimes when we're having trouble with thinking and memory, or as our disease gets a little worse, we want to withdraw. We want to stay at home and not talk to people. <clears throat> That's actually the wrong move. We need to make sure that we get out of the house. And in fact, I oftentimes talk to patients about what I like to call non-talk therapy. That's leaving your house once a week, but it can't be for your health, it can't be a doctor's appointment, it can't be for your, uh, for your job. It needs to be something that's uh, for you, like uh, going to um, a uh, support group or uh, going to a book reading or something that gets you out of the house, uh, underwater basket weaving. Um, but you want to stay socially active. The third thing uh, is to stay intellectually active. And it's been my observation that my patients that are still working tend to do a bit better than those that don't. And I think being intellectually stimulated has something to do with that. So I would recommend that when you're at uh, the supermarket, you get a hold of some Sudoku books, uh, some crosswords, word finds, uh, other puzzles. Put them in your bathrooms. And when you're in your bathroom, work on one. Uh, break out those old board games or a chess game. Uh, and instead of watching uh, the TV at night, try reading a book. These are all things that can help uh, intellectually stimulate us and can keep us cognitively optimized. Uh, again, going back to this concept of cognitive hygiene. Another really important thing is to avoid recreational drugs and alcohol. It sounds obvious, although many of my patients uh, will share with me that they imbibe, and, and yet the next sentence they tell me that they're having trouble with thinking and memory. We have to keep in mind that things like cannabis uh, and alcohol can cloud our sensorium. Getting adequate sleep is very important, uh, and in fact, Many MS patients tend to have uh, sleep disorders, they have uh, broken up sleep, they have insomnia, and if you're not sleeping adequately through the night, you're going to not be thinking clearly. Addressing sleep disorders is key for improving thinking and memory. Uh, I can't tell you how many times we've seen patients who are really struggling in the thinking department, they've got a good night's sleep and that goes away. Similarly, treating depression is critically important. MS patients are at increased risk of being depressed, almost doubly compared to the general population. And there's a term that I want to teach you called pseudo-dementia. Pseudo is Greek for similar to what it isn't, and dementia means trouble with thinking. And people that are depressed, even if you don't feel really depressed, people that are depressed can have pseudo-dementia where they don't think clearly. You treat the underlying depression and the thinking improves. And so addressing depression is very, very important. As we wrap up a couple other things that can be very, very helpful, um, talk to your doctor about streamlining your medicines and look for non-essential medicines Maybe something that you, you took for neuropathic pain years ago and you've been taking it every day, except you haven't checked to see if you still need it. Um, getting rid of non-essential medicines with your clinician is a really good conversation to have. Now please don't go dropping medicines without talking to them, but maybe together as a team you can find one or two that you don't need. The last thing are behaviors that can help us get through our day uh, by making lists, by making checklists, by keeping schedules, by maintaining a calendar, and by using a routine. Um, these techniques can help us remember why we went to the store or what things we needed to get at the store or what things we need to do to be successful throughout the day. Again, thank you very much for tuning in to this impromptu educational opportunity. My name is Aaron Boster with Ohio Health MS Center, and we talked a little bit today about healthy habits, specifically about cognitive hygiene.